Hey everybody, we're back with another episode of A Little Taste of Stanbro. I hope you're enjoying this series. We're having a good time. And today we're making something really special. It has been an extraordinarily stressful week for a lot of people. And so I thought today would be a good day to make some comfort food. So since most of us aren't allowed to travel and go to all the wonderful places we normally would go to, we're going to make beignets. I feel better already, don't you? <laughs> okay, so I have lots of things here. What I did is down here, this is two yeast cakes and a quarter cup of water. And you know, the yeast itself looks like little bitty dots, they're alive, you know? So when I put the hot water in there, I measured out a quarter cup of hot water and I took its temperature to make sure it was hot enough. And I usually stop about 110, 112 degrees. So you can get in that neighborhood, it's usually good enough. And so I've put the water in with the yeast. And what I'm waiting for it to do now is something we would call proofing. So it's gonna basically just bubble. You're gonna to start to see little bubbles develop or foam up. And once it does that, then I know that it's ready. And then over here in this pot, I feel like my counter's so busy today, but in this pot, this is one cup of milk. It's not necessarily your whole milk from the refrigerator. This is evaporated milk. So it's a half a cup of evaporated milk and a half a cup of water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go scald it. So come on, let me show you how that works. So I'm putting this on the stove and basically I'm just gonna stand here and wait. It doesn't take very long. This stove of mine is, it's a green stove. <laughs> I'm enjoying it much more than the one I used to have, which I was happy when it died, hallelujah. But um, this stove works pretty quickly. And so what happens with this milk in here, as soon as I start to see little bubbles around the edge of the milk, my mom would say that it is scalded. So once it starts to bubble, you don't wait for a rolling boil, just a couple of bubbles indicating that it is uh, increased in temperature means that it's scalded, okay? So once I see that, I'm gonna turn this off and then we're gonna take it, uh, sit it to the side and let it cool a little bit. And we're gonna go back over here and mix up the rest of the ingredients. So if you look, it's getting pretty close there. I would say maybe another minute or so and you're gonna see some bubbles. So we'll wait on that because if I walk away from the stove, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be like, boom. And <laughs> and it'll be burnt <laughs> and then I won't be able to put it in my beignets and I'm like oh I'm so sad so um so yeah so that's what we're going to do and then we're going to go back over here and we're going to put some things in our mixing bowl so we're going to put in two eggs we're going to put in some sugar shortening and some butter oh I hear something all right do you see those little bubbles on the side here's some on this side So I would say this is scalded. And usually if I kind of move it around, you can see how it's sticking to the, to the side of the pot like that with some bubbles. That tells me too it's good to go. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna move it over. We're gonna come back for it. So come on this side. And what I have in this uh, mixing bowl is a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna add some shortening, a quarter cup of shortening in here. I'm going to add three quarter cup of sugar. Okay, and I'm going to start that mixing around and then I'm going to add the eggs to it. Um, just two eggs. I don't, sometimes when I bake, I'll let my ingredients come up to room temperature. I've, I've done this both ways. I've made this recipe and the eggs were cold straight out the refrigerator. And I've made it where the eggs were actually sitting out and came up to room temperature. And quite honestly, I couldn't tell the difference. So maybe you can tell the difference. You could do it how you like to do it. All right. So we're gonna add the eggs. We're gonna add the yeast once it proofs. And then once we get to that step, I'll be right back and show you what that looks like.
Okay, so you can see in my mixer here, I have my butter, my shortening, uh, what else I have here, sugar, uh, and salt, right? And so I'm gonna get my, two, oh, I have my two eggs in there too. And this is our scalded milk from earlier. I'm gonna pour that into Sometimes, that you see that skin on the top, sometimes I take that off. I don't do it every time. <laughs> it's so good to go to watch this one. And you can kind of see our yeast is getting bigger. It looks kind of foamy now. I could let it sit longer, but this is probably good enough. I think it's good enough. And I'm gonna add it to this same mixture, okay? Calls for four cups of flour. So now that that's kind of mixed up, I'm going to add the cup of flour one cup at a time. And this is just all purpose flour. This is one cup. I put it through a, a sieve or a strainer and I sift my flour just to make sure nothing is in there. Because hey, who knows, right? And then I'm going to add one cup at a time. And once this mixes a little bit, I'm going to change from that paddle I'm using to mix over to a dough hook. This is your dough hook right here. Most mixers, you know, if you got a good mixer, it should come to a dough hook. And this makes life easier, right? So I'm going to switch over to the dough hook. I'm going to add the other three cups of flour. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Because it's just going to mix and mix and mix until it balls up onto the hook. All right? All right, so we'll be right back. Okay guys, so you should be able to see, see how the dough is trying to ball up around the dough hook? That's how it looks. Now I can see I'm still going to add a little bit more flour to this, but it's not going to be a whole, whole lot. Alright, so I'm going to stop this here, and we're going to turn this out onto the counter. Making some beignets! Woo! You may not be able to travel to New Orleans, but... We can eat some food from there. Okay. So we get all this dough off. This is some sticky business, what we're doing here. All right, so we're gonna take it out of the bowl and put it onto our clean countertop. There we go. And I'm gonna use some flour Put a little on my hands. Woo -hoo -hoo. Not that much, careful. Put a little there. I'll put my extra over there in case I need it. And we're going to knead this. Kneading, that starts with a K, not N. Oh, this feels so good. It feels like a pillow. All right, don't play too long. That's just me. All right, so I, <laughs> now that I've kneaded it, not N E E D, E D. But now that I've kneaded it, K-N, okay, I'm going to put it in this bowl. All right. And what happens now is, as I'm going to cover it, I just cover it with a paper towel. And then I'm going to let it rise. So I don't like to give a time limit on how long you should let it rise. 
you let it rise until it fills this bowl to the top. That's how, how long you let it rise. Now, in this case, I have already done this step and I have a photo of that that you'll get to see where it's at the top of the bowl. What you do after that is you have to take it out of the bowl and you're gonna roll it out. So just like I had flour on the counter over here, I have already done that over here. So I rolled it out and come over here, I'll show you what it looks like. And what you can see here is I rolled it all out and I've already started to cut the shapes that I want my beignets to be. Most of the time beignets are about two inches. I just did a guesstimate, you know, nobody's gonna say this is not two inches and thus it's not a beignet. You can make it whatever shape you want. You can make circles, triangles, it doesn't matter. Cookie cutter shapes, who cares? And so what you'll do is, is once they're all cut out, we're going to fry them on the stove in oil. All right, you guys, here we are, we're at the stove. I'm just laying the first one in the oil and they float immediately. You don't have to have six cups of oil in order to do this. Um, you could use like, you know, those little small fl uh, fryers. Um, I have one too. I just didn't want to put six cups of oil in there. I just wanted to do a couple. So you can see it's already brown. I'm gonna turn it over. I made sure that this oil it's actually a little too hot to tell by how it got brown. It was 350 degrees. And so by using one of the fryers, the commercial um, top, uh, tabletop type fryer, you kind of know what the temperature is at all times. When you're using your stove, you have to measure it a lot. So, but for our purpose today, we're just going to do them like that. You can see it's brown right away. I'm going to put it to the side. Yep, I think my oil is too hot. All right, let's do the next one. We're gonna just do as many of these as we can. And then we're gonna call the neighbors to come and eat them because I'm not gonna eat all of these. That much, I promise you. And I got a lot of people in this house who would love to eat them, but they are watching their figures and weight, which I should be doing too. <laughs> literally like 30 seconds maybe you just have to look and see when they're brown flip it over and take them out all right I'll show you what they all look like when we get done and we are going to eat okay so now we have finished making our beignets and we're going to add the most favorite part the confectioner sugar look at this here's our beignets everybody likes sugar on theirs and they like them heavy so heavy it is it is snowing okay beautiful all right and then we need a taste tester my taste tester is not here today so i'll be the taste tester oh my god this is delicious <laughs> you can have them the traditional way or if you want, you can make a caramel glaze to pour over them, maybe with some pecans in it, or just whatever it is that you like to have with yours. But these are so good. I may not be able to visit my favorite place in New Orleans, but I feel like they came to visit me today. I hope you'll cook with me soon. Talk to you guys later. I'm gonna eat some more. <laughs>